All right, we will go ahead and get started. Um, as I noted, my name is Tom. I'm with Inflow Communications, and I'm going to bring you through our training today on how to assign and use schedules in the Genesis Cloud system. A um, little bit about our agenda today. This is going to be a pretty brief one, um, just to, to get straight to the point here. I'm going to talk a little bit about who Inflow is and how we can help you and your business. And then we are going to go straight into the Genesis schedule training. So a little bit about in, Inflow Communications, what it is that we do here. Um, we, for the last 11 years, have been focused on contact center and unified communication solutions. Voice is what we do. Um, as a result, because we don't branch into other technologies such as networking equipment, anybody that you talk to at Inflow Communications on, on the support side is going to be able to assist you with your voice application and will be well versed in what you are using. We have over 50 employees headquartered in Portland, Oregon, but we are 100% remote and we currently service over 260,000 seats and 800 customers nationwide and in many cases worldwide. We operate with speed, urgency, and agility. We wanna make sure we get you all the information you could ever need and then some regarding your voice applications to make sure that they're gonna work exactly the way that your business um, demands them. And we do offer full lifecycle guides to the UC, the CC, and the CX spaces. Here's a quick snippet of some of the customers that we support. And from here, you can see our customer profile as well. We do focus on mission critical, critical communications, value our partnerships with strategic decision makers, and we target mid-market and enterprise. And here's a few of our partners as well. As always, if you have any questions during this training, there is a little questions box in your GoToWebinar application. You can type your questions in there. At the end of the training, I will take a look at any questions that I see and I will get those answered. If there's anything that I can't directly answer, um, I will make sure to get you an email before the end of the day with the information that you request. And so with that, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. So you'll see here now on my screen, I do have the Genesis admin screen. Um, up and active here. What we are going to be focusing on today is specifically how scheduling works and also how to assign them using the call routing tab. There are also additional ways to use schedules such as evaluating them in architect flows that would be reserved for a later training, but this will get you the basics of how those scheduling works. So on this page, if you haven't seen it before, if you're new to it, it is a little bit daunting. It does have quite a few things going on. Um, everything is well broken down, so it, it is fairly easy to find what you're looking for. But if you're new to it, it can take a couple moments. What we're looking for here specifically is the scheduling um, link, which you'll see is under routing. If you aren't sure, make sure that you're using this search box because it's going to make your life a lot easier. So if I start typing schedule, schedule here, You'll see that it comes up with routing scheduling and also one for workforce management if you have that capability as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click into the scheduling tab. Now in the scheduling tab, you're going to see that there are two different links up at the top. We have a schedule group and we also have a schedule. They work hand in hand. You actually build schedules that will be based on specific timeframes or even specific days. Um, they do not get broken down like other, um, um, systems into modes such as holiday or custom modes, if you're familiar with MyTel schedules, for example. Um, everything that you would need to schedule for is just built in the regular schedules area. Those are then assigned to schedule groups, which you can then assign for call routing to make sure that your schedules are going to be followed. So here we have a couple of different um, schedules that are already built in the system here, which you'll see we have one um, up at the top, like the eight to five Monday through Friday, close to lunch, and then nine, nine to one on Saturday. And you'll note uh, on the right side, we have a couple of different schedules that are applied to this group. So this is actually how these groups work, as well as a time zone. So that's how these work in tandem. Once the schedules are applied to the schedule group, you can apply the schedule group to a call routing mechanism, such as a DID that flows to one of your queues and use that for routing purposes. So in order to jump into this and show exactly how it's done, first thing that we're gonna look at is the schedules link here, which is gonna be the one on the right. When I open this up, you're gonna see quite a few different scheduling options that will load. Might take a second here. Let's go ahead and reload this and see if there is an issue with the page loading. Uh, 
There we go. And so you can see here that we do have a number of different schedules that are applied. And you'll note they have varying names. We have stuff that looks like it's a uh, normal workday schedule, a normal workday schedule maybe for the weekend. We even have one for specific days. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. And you can see right at right um, from this page, you can see the schedule name as well as the recurrence type. And then if you click into each one, you can see what they're doing. Up on the top right, you can also click on this plus to create a new schedule, which is what we're going to do here for the training. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this plus sign. When I do this, it's just gonna pop up a little spot here for a name. So I can name this whatever I would like to call it. Training open, we'll call it that. And then I can either do a specific date or I can make this a repeating event. So I can set this up if it's only one specific day or, or um, like, for example, July 4th, but only for 2021, I could do that. I could set it up for um, every time on a specific date, or I can do it like a weekly schedule. So what I'm going to do here to show the options that are available here is I'm going to click on repeating event, which is going to be more than likely what you're going to do for every sort of schedule that you're going to build. Um, and you'll see here, I can, re I can set it up to repeat um, a any number of times that I want, and then based on the frequency is how the repetitions are going to happen. So if I wanted to do something that, for example, is like once a year, maybe it's a holiday like the 4th of July, um, I would choose one repeating one repeat each year. And then I would choose the date that I would want. In this case, for example, July. And then um, I can choose the different variable here. Um, so there's different things you can do here. If you want a specific date, under date, on would be the specific date. So in this particular case, Let's say I wanted to create a schedule event for the 4th of July. This would be all you would need to do. This would act, actually set it up. So every year on the 4th of July, whatever we set up for um, for this um, schedule is going to happen every year on the 4th of July. Now, if I want to change this, um, so for example, I want to set up a week a weekly rotation for our normal hours of operation, I could do it like this. So for example, I could change that to the week and I could change the days that I want this to um, account for. So if I know that, for example, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm open for the same amount of hours every single day during those days, I could just select those days as I've done here, and then I could select the time frame that I want to use. Now down below, um, I can select a specific range. So you can see here, it has automatically set in 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. here for me. If I want to change this this amount, I can just change it here. I can type it in, or I can use these sliders to make it easy, and it will give you the total approximate um, time as well. So you can see, once I change it from seven to five, it shows that this schedule is available for 10 hours. Now, if I click on the duration, um, I can actually change the start and end times if I want to as well. So from um, 7 a.m., I could actually make it last 10 specific hours. So I could just go from 7 a.m. 10 hours from then as well, if you want to do it that way. Um, this does the exact same thing as just setting a start and end time. So this is likely going to be a much easier solution for you to use that. Now, if you want to set something up for all day, if you're open 24 hours, all you have to do is select the all day slider. You'll note that the timer goes away. And um, when I bring it back, it will reset the time. So you'll just want to make sure that your times are correct. So in this particular case for this one, let's go ahead and say eight to five. Five, boom, and PM. There we go. So we're eight to five there. And then the, you also have a start and end for criteria for the, for the schedule event. So you can just have it set for the next time the criteria is met. So in this particular case, um, for any, any schedule group that this was applied to um, the next time it hit Monday or any one of those days that are shaded in, this would take precedent. Um, or you can do it on a specific date as well. So if you if you know, for example, that your support hours are going to change three weeks from now and you want to create that schedule now, you could do that and set a start date for that um, so that um, the schedule won't actually take effect until the date that you have specified. And up at the top right, you'll actually see the different um, the different occurrences that are going to come up. So you can see here when I'm when I have it set to start on the 13th, my next occurrence is actually Tuesday the 13th. If I set this to the 23rd, or I'm sorry, the 21st, for example, you'll note that the occurrences change up top because now that my start date is the 21st of April, I have a my first occurrence on the 21st, then the 22nd, then the 23rd, because that would actually be in this range. Now, if I get rid of Friday, 
you'll note that the Friday changes and now shows that the next occurrence after Thursday is Monday the 26th because the rest of the days are not shaded in. So this is a really easy way to create a quick schedule. So in this particular case, we'll set this, this one up for training open and do that. Now let's make another one real quick, just for, let's say for Saturday. Training open Saturday, we'll make this a repeating event. And we'll do again, one every week and we'll do only Saturday and we'll do nine to 12 PM. So we're open for three hours and we'll go ahead and save that one. So now we have a couple of different options that we have available. We can actually use this now to create a schedule group. So let's go ahead and go over that. I'm gonna go ahead and click into the schedule groups tab here. And you'll just as before, you'll see those options that we have available. You'll note on here, it does show the time zone. This is actually where the time zone will be applied for any scheduling that you're going to set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus just like I did before. And we're gonna create a quick schedule group for the training group. If I can not hit the caps lock button, there we go. So we'll just call this the training group. And you'll notice here, there are schedules for open, closed and holiday. This is because you can actually set up different routing mechanisms for each one of these. Um, so you do have that capability. You'll note that there's nothing in here by default. And this is an important thing to talk about, especially if you're coming from, for example, the MyTelephone system, which handles schedules a little bit differently. With the MyTel system, if you're familiar with that, if you don't have anything applied um, in a schedule, it's going to assume that you're always open. Now in the Genesis system, unless you just don't have a schedule applied at all, anything that isn't accounted for is considered closed. So it will default to the closed route unless there's an open or a holiday schedule to actually apply for that specific time. So that's something to keep in mind here. So for example here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and, se and select my time zone here. Um, it's done by, by city, so it's nice and easy to find. I'm on the West Coast, so I'm just gonna find Los Angeles here. That's nice and easy. And under my schedules, I'm actually gonna select for open. I'm going to type in training open. I'm gonna hit add. And then I'm gonna training open Saturday as well. And I'm gonna add that. This could be considered if you don't have any holidays that you're going to take, or if you if you don't want to have anything specific for um, closed hours, like maybe you want to have an hour where your phones just go somewhere else during your lunch hour, which some of our customers do. Um, this would actually be a full schedule group because what will happen is based on our rules that we know before from um, eight to five on Monday through Friday, and then from or I'm sorry, from nine to five on Monday through Friday, and then nine to noon on Saturday, we're open. The default evaluation for the um, schedule group is going to go to closed outside of those times. So if those are the only times that we're open, we don't need to worry about any holidays. We can we can use this as a full schedule and it will be closed anytime that's outside of those open dates. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here. When I do, it's gonna pop me back here and you'll see this training group, um, schedule group that has now been created. And next to it, you can see the training open and the training open Saturday schedules that are, are that are a part of this. And you'll note there is no closed and there is no holiday that is there. If I wanna look at these at a glance, if I'm not sure what these are, I can click on these links on the right side. It will bring me straight to the schedule event. And if we make any changes here, it will directly impact the schedule groups that it is a part of. One other thing to keep in mind is even though there are um, multiple schedule groups and schedules, you can use multiple schedules for this for or i'm sorry you can use the same schedule rather for multiple schedule groups as you can see here we actually have in this test schedule we have an 8 a.m to 5 p.m monday through friday and the same name is in this top schedule um that's important to note because if you make a change to this schedule it's actually going to impact both schedule groups so if you don't want to do that make sure that you are making copies of those schedules and naming them appropriately so that you can assign them to the correct schedule groups and then any modifications will only affect the schedule groups that you want them to um, be modified so we've created our schedule groups now this will allow us now to actually set up routing so what i'm going to do now is um, on the left side, in, in the uh, routing drop down here, you'll notice that under scheduling, there's an option for call routing. This is actually where you get this set up. 
Now we're not gonna go over all of call routing, but I wanted to show you how each one of the schedule options are used in the system here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on training here. And what we will do is just for a test here, we're, we're going to show you how it would normally look. And then we're going to um, show you how to set up the different routing here. So um, in here, um, when you first set up your routing, you're going to have a name to, to um, put in, an address, which is going to be the number that is called. Um, so in this case, that 8675309 is what is used for the training flow. Um, and then under regular routing, it will default to schedule-based routing being off. And you'll notice with schedule-based routing being off, all calls are going to one specific destination. If I want to use my scheduling, all I have to do is turn this on here and then select my schedule group that I want to use. So in this particular case, I would use my training group schedule. Now it won't show you what the schedule itself is. So it's important to know what the schedule is before you get started here. Um, but you can then use this to change where these calls to this DID are going to go, which will be different flows that are built in the system here. So in this particular case, if I wanted to actually send things to the training day here um, for um, my open times, I could set that. I could set a closed in, a closed uh, flow or a different sort of flow that would send, send my callers elsewhere. Maybe you have a flow that sends callers to an automated answering service, for example. Um, you can set that for the closed and do the same for the holiday. And all this is going to do is simply when the schedule is checked, it is going to send the call to whatever flow is, is designated for the schedule that matches. So in this particular case, if it's between nine and five Monday through Friday, it's gonna to go to training day. If it's between nine and noon on Saturday, it would also go to training day. Otherwise it would go to training closed because we don't have any holidays set. So that is the option that you have available. And so that concludes our quick tutorial on scheduling. Um, there will be a little bit more on this in the future, such as how to actually work that into architect using evaluations of schedule groups. Um, but that does conclude our training for today. Um, so as before, if we do have any questions, go ahead and put those into the questions box here. I will take a look at that here and give you guys just a couple minutes to see if any questions do come through. All right, it looks like we don't have any direct questions. If we do come up with questions later, that's absolutely fine as well. You can always contact us with any questions that you do have and we can we can assist you and point you in the right direction. If you do have any questions, you can reach us at 844-446-3569 or you can send an email to contact at inflowcommunications.com. And as always, you can check out our knowledge base for more resources and videos like this one. We have a plethora of information available to you um, at your fingertips through our support portal. Um, so definitely check those out as well. So again, on behalf of Inflow Communications, my name is Tom. Thank you very much for taking the time to spend with us on, a, on this webinar today. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody.